There's a mega line, mega. I'm all about over the top power size. <laughs> What up dude bros, I'm Frank, that's the video footage that I collected for the Nerf Modulus Ghost Ops Evader, which I had a chance to play with at the New York Toy Fair. That's all the footage, so now it's just my opinion and stuff, all the good stuff right at the beginning, so now you can abandon the video if you want to. But for my opinion and further elaboration on these components. The Evader is within the subseries Ghost Ops, which is a subseries of Modulus. Instrike, Modulus, Ghost Ops. And it'll retail for $39.99, that's US dollars, and it's coming out in fall 2018. It's a battery powered flywheel operated blaster with a semi-automatic trigger, very similar to a Strife. With slightly modified ergonomics, it has kind of a front grip, sort of looking like an SMG in my opinion. Also featuring a horizontal magazine, which kind of fits the rest of the ergonomics, not my taste, but cool looking. And it's painted clear, which I think is super cool, and they took advantage of the clear shell by integrating LEDs into the blaster. I initially thought this was L-wire, but it's actually LED like bulbs, like standard LEDs that shoots into a diffuse, like sort of like a straw. So there are only a couple of LEDs within the blaster, so it's not pulling that much current and battery from your battery source. And those LEDs are turned on with the front trigger, so the back one obviously fires the blaster and when you want to turn on the lights, you can press the trigger in the front. The included suppressor can also light up, and I think it's pretty cool that they mounted a little micro switch in the very front so that LED doesn't turn on unless you attach the suppressor. When you slide on the suppressor, it bumps the micro switch, activating that LED, which I think is cool. Which could open the door for some really cool modular electronic attachments. So if you slide on a given stock, one stock, not another, will bump a particular micro switch, which could activate different things in the blaster. The potential there would be really cool, or at least for modders, since I'm not sure that would be really practical for Nerf. But it's still pretty cool that this suppressor does that. The firing mechanism on the evader works pretty well. It feels pretty smooth, sort of like a strife. The newer generation strife that is without the dart lock. But of course I didn't have a chance to run it hard and I went into the toy fair thinking I'm not going to break a single blaster this year and I didn't. So successful. But that means I wasn't stress testing them. I will stress test the crap out of the production models that I get my hands on from my reviews later on. So for 40 US dollars you get the evader blaster plus the clear suppressor and that's like the kit. And sold separately is a chronograph attachment and a red dot sight sort of attachment. First the chronograph which is super cool. This thing attaches onto any in strike nozzle and it's pretty short in length, so it should not be negatively affecting your range or velocity that much. However, the diameter of the barrel, I don't think it'll fit rival rounds, so you can chrono most dart blasters, but not mega or not rival. Still, it's 15 US dollars for a freaking chronograph. The one I use for my test is about 100 and I think $10, plus I have a little like UV thing set up, so I can use it indoor, otherwise you have to be in direct sunlight for that to work well. But that's like $150. This thing is $15 and attaches to the like muzzle of your blaster. I didn't have my chronograph or any other way to measure velocity on site, so I can't really verify its accuracy, but it was pretty consistent and it was reading like 65 to 72 FPS when I was shooting the, that blaster in the in the toy fair, which seems in the ballpark of what you'd expect from the blaster. So it, it should be pretty accurate and it displays in feet per second and you also have a little unit conversion for meters per second, but I don't know what the hell a meter is. So I just, I'll leave mine in feet per second. $15 for a barrel mounted chronograph would be a pretty good deal, but this one is also a freaking ammo counter. So it has a count up or a count down option. It can't do both, but it does either one of those along with chrono at the same time. So if you're using up or down counting, you can always be chronoing. So when your batteries start to go flat, like halfway through a Nerf war, you can see those chrono readings start to drop a little bit and you say, hey, I might switch out my batteries, which I think is really helpful because if you're constantly shooting and it's just a very slow fade, you might not be totally aware of it. And you might just get kind of used to it. That's how people get fat because you get a little bit fatter every day and you just kind of forget. And it takes a picture of looking back five years ago, wow, now I'm a fatty. And then you remember. Unless you step on a scale every day, then you can kind of chart it. And that's what the chrono will do. This video is getting weird. Back onto the nerfs. Fat people, what am, what am I doing? The count up feature simply counts how many rounds fly through the barrel. So if you want to turn it on in the beginning of your nerf war, you go pew, pew, pew all day long for like a few hours. You go through tons of mags. At the end of the day, it could be kind of fun to say, hey, I shot, you know, 450 darts. And for anybody nerding out over battery capacity or battery longevity, something I don't really reveal in my video, because testing that is really tricky. So I don't want to share false conclusions, so I just completely omit that. But with this type of device, you can shoot all day and you say, okay, this is when my blaster started to shoot slower. I need to change my batteries. You look at your count up and say, okay, it took, you know, 1200 darts or whatever, which is pretty cool. Or you can also use the count down feature, which works like a standard ammo counter. So if you have an 18 round magazine, you click the little button to go up to 18. It moves by single integers, meaning you go one, two, three, four, five. So you can set to any magazine capacity. And after that set, when the little IR beams detect a dart fly through, it counts down one and it 
counts down and it keeps counting down like a normal ammo counter, which is really cool. And the overall shell of this like barrel attachment is pretty small. The barrel diameter again is pretty thin. So if it works too long, it would be negatively affecting your darts, but it's only like a normal modulus barrel pretty much. So you might see small drops in accuracy or velocity by like a barrel bump, the dart bouncing off the barrel just a little bit, but I don't think it'll be that big a deal. And I'm glad it's small because it's totally usable to just put on any blaster and run it all day. It's not heavy enough like with huge batteries. It's only two AA alkaline batteries and it's not wicked long. So it's, it won't be banging into walls or adding a bunch of inaccuracy for a stupid barrel. So there will be very little reason not to use it. You can chrono your darts. You can kind of pass it around with your friends to see who's shooting what. And it also has that ammo counter feature. This is a very cool product. When I heard about it, I thought that was going to be a standalone product for like 40, maybe $50, kind of like the night vision scope, which was $50, but $15 for this barrel thing. I'm talking more about the chronograph than the actual blaster. This is just cool. As you can tell, I'm stoked for that. And then the last attachment in the Ghost Op series that's launching now is the little red dot sight and the little target. I'm not really pumped for this one. This red dot has a very weak red dot. It's, it's not like a flashlight like some of their other attachments. It really is just a single LED emitting a very small amount of light. And the included target has a little reflective panel on the center. So when you line up the light to the reflector and the reflector and it bounces back into your eye, you can see it like kind of illuminating as red. And that means your targets are aligned so you can shoot and hopefully hit your target. There's a lot flawed with that accuracy system because of the reflection. And it also means you can only shoot at that target or anything with that very particular reflective property. So it won't work as a normal optic. And it's also $15. Compared to the Chrono, that's just, I'm not interested in that at all. It's really not that practical and it's not like cool looking like the red dot or a lot of the other optics to put on just for the style points. It's kind of weird looking. Everything else Nerf is releasing is super cool. And I saw that I was like, putting that right next to your Chrono thing in this really cool evader, like, why did you even release it? But I guess you just need to kind of fill out the Ghost Ops line. And it's clear, so it matches, so I guess you have different options if you just really, really want to put something on top. But overall, very excited for the Evader Blaster. Other than the Horizontal Magazine, the Blaster felt absolutely great. The ergonomics were pretty solid. The ergonomics were fine even with the horizontal magazine. I just have a bias against them. But the blaster's ergonomics are sexy. It has a side rail at stock attachment point front with the chrono thing. Very excited for the Ghost Op series. I want to see how they start painting other things clear because it'll be really cool. And especially if they integrate LEDs. A lot of modders added them and they looked really cool. People have made really beautiful projects. But if Nerf does it, for about the same retail cost. It's just cool right out of the box. And they're L-wire, or not really L-wire, but it looks like L-wire is pretty well done. So I really like the blaster. You can see the mechanics, you can see the LEDs, and even without focusing on that, the blaster shell itself is really sleek and just pretty cool. So that is my more elaborate overview on the Evader launching in fall of 2018 for $39.99. Again, that's just for the blaster and the suppressor, that $40. The chrono barrel is another $15, and that's sold separately. So if you don't even want the Evader, you can buy that, put it onto any other InStrike nozzle, and that little red dot, let me know if you are interested in that red dot because next to everything else, I don't, I don't get who wants that. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do, but who wants to buy a target system that only shoots at one target and you can't build your own or find more? I mean, once you knock it over, you have to set it up. You can't just, I don't get it. But I'll stop there. That's all of my footage. This is the first of the flood. So prepare yourself. Nerf Toy Fair footage, inbound bros. And I'll be following this format where I put all of the video and stuff and everything kind of important right in the beginning. So if you just want to see that and not listen to anything I have to say, it'll be like that consistently for all of them. I don't want to hide any valuable content in the back of the video or anything. So check out my opinions on other blasters by watching all the way through. If you want to, but that concludes the Evader overview. Number one, let's round it up for the flood. Thanks so much for watching this one, bros. As always, stay tactical. cool.